Farming in Arc Knights is complicated. Stages drop all sorts of combinations of items, so it's hard to tell what the best options are. Should I farm blue rocks in 2-4, or get green ones from 1-7 and craft the blue ones? Or maybe 5-10 if I need devices too? Faced with such a dilemma, the English-speaking community did what it does best, wait for someone else to solve the problem for them. This is Moe's Material Farming Spreadsheet. If you haven't seen it before, maybe you've seen more simple farming guides like this or this, which usually use Moe's sheet as a source. This spreadsheet has been the main farming guide for EN players ever since Mo made it five years ago. Even today, when people ask for farming advice, Mo's sheet is basically the only guide that gets mentioned. So what's so cool about this specific guide anyway? Let's look at what we used before Mo's sheet existed. This is the most popular farming guide I remember from the early days. Arknight's farming guide and important drop rates. It was shared pretty much everywhere, from Reddit, to Discord, to, uh... This sheet gives every item a sandy value, and for each stage, it calculates the sandy ratio by dividing the total sandy value of the drops by how much it costs to run the stage. For example, here it says the stage 510 has a ratio of 1.2. It costs 21 sandy to run, so on average it drops 25.2 sandy's worth of materials. Or does it? I want to put the Vsauce intro music here, but I think it's copyrighted. If you spend 21 sandy to get some materials, they should be worth 21 sandy at most, not 25.2. Otherwise you'd be getting 1.2 sanity per sanity, which doesn't really make any sense. Later spreadsheets like Moe's have the best stages at 100% efficiency, or a sandy ratio of 1, and worse stages have lower numbers. Early spreadsheets, like important drop rates, assigned sandy values that were way too high, which is how the best maps all have efficiency numbers over 100%. They did this by finding how much sandy was needed to get a single item, ignoring other drops from the stage. To see why this doesn't work, let's look at a chip stage. PRB1 costs 18 sandy, and always drops a tier 1 chip, either a caster chip or a sniper chip. So on average, each run drops one half of both chips. It takes two runs to get a single caster chip on average, so it's worth 36 sandy. Same for sniper chips. But if both chips are worth 36 sandy each, then PRB1 drops 36 sandy per run, which gives it a sandy ratio or efficiency of 200%. Somehow, both chips are worth twice as much as what it costs to farm them. Maybe I'm just getting a 50% discount, but compared to what? PRB1 is the only stage that drops either of these chips, so it can't be a discount if there's no other way to farm them. The problem, as Mo puts it, is that an item sandy value is not equal to sandy per drop. In this case, even if it takes 36 sandy to get one specific chip, the value of those chips should be lower so that the total efficiency of PRB1 is at most 100%. For chip stages, this is easy to fix. If we just set the value of each chip to 18 sandy instead of 36, everything makes sense. Spending 18 sandy gets you a chip worth 18 sandy, and the efficiency of PRB1 is 100%. Material stages like 1-7 are a bit more complicated though. We need to give every drop a sandy value, such that the total drops from the stage are worth its sandy cost or less. We should also make sure mats are worth as much as what it takes to craft them. So now we have a system of equations and inequalities for 1-7, which doesn't look too hard to solve until you add in all the other stages. Good luck finding a solution to this. Fortunately, we don't need luck because we have computers. Linear programming is kinda complicated, but basically we can write a system of inequalities as a matrix where each equation has a row and each variable has a column with the values being the coefficients from the equations. Next, we create a vector for the right side of each equation. Now we can plug the matrix and the vector into a computer, and it splits out a solution to the system of inequalities we wrote. Linear programming is a lot more complicated than this, so if you're a nerd like me, I recommend watching this video by Tom S. or reading the Wikipedia page about it. But most of you probably aren't nerds, so before my viewer retention drops to zero, let's go back to Arknights. We can use drop rate data from Penguin Statistics to construct the matrix for the inequalities we wrote earlier. The vector will contain the sandy cost of the stages. 
Shoving this into a computer gives us sanity values for each item, which lets us calculate the efficiency of each stage. This linear programming method is what most spreadsheet uses, which is why it's so much better than the more basic spreadsheets from before. I mean, seriously, the old one was saying 1.7 is 20% worse than 5.10 and 6.5. That can't be right. Most sheet has been EN's main farming guide for a long time, but it hasn't been updated in over a year. Since then, we've gotten a whole new chapter of farming stages, with CN getting another. So I'm taking things into my own hands. First I went to college to understand linear programming, and then I made my own So here it is, my version of Mo's farming spreadsheet. The main page has a small table of good stages for every material type, including the new CN thing. There's also separate tabs for each one with full lists of stages, which is useful for stuff like grindstones that have several farming spots. All of these tables are generated automatically from the data tab, which has the results of all the complicated math we looked at earlier. I used some Python code to get data from Penguin Statistics and do all the cool linear programming stuff, and I take the results and paste them into this sheet here. Everything else is generated by a bunch of spreadsheet formulas, so it kind of updates automatically, I just have to paste in new data every once in a while. There's two main differences between my calculation methods and most sheet, besides just being more up to date. First, I use a different sanity value for EXP, or battle records. I consider a drone to have equal value whether it's used on a trading post, EXP, or gold. This sets the value of EXP lower than if I had just used LS6, which means it only has an efficiency of 68%. This basically means the base is better at producing EXP than LS6 is, and if you want to farm battle records, you should use drones to produce more in the base instead. Most spreadsheet also sets a lower sanity value for EXP, but it's a bit higher than what I use. I'm not completely sure how we calculated this value, but the end result is that LS6 is even worse on my sheet. For the other main difference, I've set the value of Loxic Coal to 1.8 Sandy. This is way lower than other tier 3 items, which are worth around 20 or 30 Sandy. All events now have unlimited Loxic Coal in the shop, so I'm making the shop offer as good as the unlimited LMD. Other coal-related items are also worth less now as a result, like White Horse Coal and Bipolar Nano Flakes. This also means the table for coal stages is empty. In my code, the elite material that makes up most of a stage's sandy value is considered the main drop type if it's at least 40% of the drops. Since Loxic Coal has so little value now, none of the old coal stages have it as the main drop anymore. In fact, 611 is now considered a stage for devices instead of coal. In a few months, events will also have unlimited manganese ore in their shops, so the same thing will happen to them. And that pretty much wraps it up. I'll put a link to this new spreadsheet in the description below. If you have any questions about the sheet or the math behind it, leave them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them, even if I still don't understand linear programming very well myself. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.